Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover Shade Smooth. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. Alright, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu option and pick new, general, and you don't need to save this file. Let's delete the default cube. So press Shift X, then press Enter to delete it, then Shift A, and under the mesh, let's add another cylinder. Now let's say we wanted to turn this cylinder into a bit of a shape that bows out and comes back, a little bit like what we saw in the previous example. So roll your mouse wheel forward a bit to zoom in, press Tab to switch to edit mode, press 2 to switch to edge selection mode, Click once in space to deselect everything. All of that was just so that we didn't have so much visual selection and vertices showing that kind of makes things a little confusing. Now let's use the same tool we learned in the last lesson. So that's the loop cut tool. So press control R, then let go of those keys and hover your cursor over the cylinder so that you see this circle and roll your mouse wheel forward till you get several rings. It doesn't matter exactly how many, but a whole bunch like what I have here. Don't go too overboard. Maybe there's 10 here or so. Something like that will be fine. And then go ahead and click. And then we don't need to slide them up or down so you can click again to finish that up. Now, as soon as you've done that, go down to the adjust last operation panel, click on it to open it up. And let's go ahead and adjust the smoothness. So click and hold down on the smoothness and adjust it to the right a bit Maybe something like that is fine. Then you can go ahead and click to collapse that menu back down. Now let's say this was the exact shape that we needed. So we're ready to move on. Press tab and there's a problem here. We think of this as a nice round cylinder and we think of it as having this nice curvy bow to it. But what we end up seeing here is a whole bunch of facets. And that's not gonna look real great when we're trying to show this off in the context of our bigger design. So we have a few things that we can do about this. Now, there's gonna be some other options that we're gonna learn in a future lesson to making really smooth, curvy surfaces, and it'll have to do with subdivision. And while we will cover those in future lessons, I wanna show you something that you will also use, especially when you're trying to give off the appearance of a curved surface, even though there's these underlying facets. So let's talk about this first option now. It'll be useful later as well. And then we'll talk about the more complicated modeling thing in a future lesson. So the thing I'm talking about right now is that we can have Blender shade this so that it looks more smooth. And in object mode, which we're in, you can right click on an object and pick the shade smooth option. Notice that now that looks nice and curvy on the outside of that cylindrical part of this object. If for some reason you wanted to get back to seeing those facets, you would just right click on it again and pick shade flat and it's right back. Now, right click one more time and go back to shade smooth. So on one hand, this looks pretty nice, but at certain angles of view, you can kind of pick up that there is a bit of a lip here. But if you're at certain angles, it could get to be where it's a little difficult to make out the top of this shape. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and undo back a few steps. So control Z on a PC or command Z on a Mac and undo back to before we added those loop cuts. So we have just our normal cylinder. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Once you have the initial cylinder again, press Tab to go back to object mode, and again, we see those facets. So this would have been true just right from the get-go, this would have looked faceted. Well, Let's say that all we needed was a cylinder. We just needed the outside here to look smooth. Right click on that object and pick the option for shade smooth. And it shades smooth again. And at certain angles of view, it looks maybe okay. But notice up here at the top, we've completely lost any definition of the fact 
that there's a top here. So it's really hard to tell what's going on. There's a couple of ways that we can fix this. So first, I'm gonna show you the automatic way to fix it. And you'll likely wanna do this most of the time that you're using Shade Smooth. So with the object selected, over on the right hand side, go down to where there's a green triangle here. This is the object data properties. Go ahead and click on it and it'll change what you see over to the right. And for right now, we only care about one quick thing. So click on normals and notice it says auto smooth. Click on the checkbox and it's defaulting to 30 degrees, which means any angle that's 30 degrees or greater, it's going to show us that angle. And so what I mean by that is notice the outside of the cylinder is smooth. So the transition from facet to facet is less than 30 degrees between each facet, so it just looks smooth. But the transition from this face to this face is a 90 degree angle here. So now it's not going to auto smooth that out. So now we can clearly see the definition of the top of the cylinder while the outside is still rounded. So in general, something to make note of is when you're in object mode and you right click to shade smooth, I'm gonna hit escape because we've already done that. If something about that shading smooth is not respecting some of the edges that should still appear a little more sharp, you would then go to the object data properties panel, go to the normals and turn on auto smooth. Now that being said, we're going to check off auto smooth for now. And then we'll go ahead and show you another way to fix this. That's a little more manual. So let's go ahead and press tab to get back over to edit mode. And while you might be thinking, why would I do something manually when there's a checkbox to turn it on? You'll see that there's a subtle difference here that can give you a new way of presenting your objects in shade smooth mode. So go ahead and follow along. Click once in space to deselect anything in case there is anything selected. And we're gonna use the loop cut tool to add an edge loop. So press Control R and then hover over the cylinder Click once and let go and move your mouse up really near to that top edge and click and let go. And then we're gonna do this one more time. So control R, click and move down to that bottom edge really close but not all the way down there and click and let go. Then press tab to go back to object mode. And notice now we don't have that auto smooth feature turned on but you notice now that we've gained back a little bit of the idea of the edge here. And it's not just the edge, it's almost as if there's a little bit of a bevel, if you will. So what happens here, pressing tab to go back to edit mode, is shade smooth when we had only this one face here and this other face on top, it was shading smoothly from this face across to this face. But now the shading smooth is really only transitioning from the top face to this face, so it's a more subtle transition here. And then separately, it's transitioning between this face and this face. So it's able to give off the appearance of a bevel because this face is being shaded and all of the faces around it are being shaded like they're vertical. This one is being shaded for the most part like it's horizontal. And this face here, even though it's vertical, it's kind of like almost as if it's shaded as if it was at a 45 degree angle, which is why there's almost an appearance of a bevel there. It's not quite like that, but that's roughly why that works. So if you slide an edge loop up really close here and slide an edge loop down really close there, your shading will look a lot better around this side. Now it turns out that the shading across the top still looks a little strange. It's almost as if this is bowing up, but this is really flat here. So let's just show you how you would fix the top of the cylinder. In this case, we need to select the face. So press three for face selection mode, click once on it. Then press I for the inset faces tool and go ahead and just inset this in just a little bit and then click to set it down. Now press tab to go back to object mode and you notice now that the top is being shaded properly as well. So we needed an edge loop around this side to kind of handle how the shading worked near the edge here, but we needed what felt like an edge loop but was best handled by using the inset tool so the inset tool inset those edges there, and that's how we fixed it up over there. And now we have a really nice looking shading across that edge. So in the auto smooth case, that looked a bit sharper, 
we got it really quickly, so we got that for free. And if that was good enough, just go with that option. But the other th cool thing is without even having to add a bevel, just by sliding an edge loop here and insetting an edge there, we were able to handle it similarly. And maybe that looks even nicer depending on what we're using this for. So in general, we've been talking about subdividing surfaces and edge loops and adding edge loops. And it's all about using those things to manipulate the geometry to look like something new. But then often, whatever you create is going to look somewhat faceted. And so it's just important to know that while you're adding all of these subdivisions to increase the complexity of your model, you can shade it smooth to give it the feeling of what you ultimately really want it to look like. And it's just important to know about these little nuances in how Shade Smooth works. So you can either turn on the Auto Smooth feature or add additional edges or edge loops to help you figure out how to transition between sharper changes here. Okay, that all being said, you know enough now to move on to the next lesson where I have a challenge for you. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.